Welcome to part two of our two-part video on DC IR drop analysis and ANSYS SI Wave. In part one, we showed how to import a board design into SI Wave and set it up for analysis. In this part, we'll run the DC IR analysis to see what it tells us about the power supplies on our board. We'll get some useful information that will help us to improve the design. If you watched part one, you'll recall that we set up a 1.8 volt voltage source to represent the voltage regulator module. We can see this voltage source and its value in the circuit element properties dialog. We also generated a number of current sources to model the power pins on the ASIC device. We can see here that there are 17 of these current sources. Now we're ready to run the DC IR drop analysis on the board. When we do an IR drop analysis, we can either do a very quick and rough analysis to get a general idea of any problems, or we can do a more careful and detailed analysis. Here we'll show some of the options for a more detailed simulation. The first thing to do is to tell it to mesh the vias. That creates a more accurate picture of the current flow through them. Next, we turn on adaptive mesh refinement. This tells the software to first do a finite element analysis with a relatively coarse initial mesh. It will automatically estimate where the numerical errors in its solution are the highest. Then it will refine the mesh in those regions and resolve the problem. This process will repeat until the solution stops changing or the iteration limit is reached. You can see that we've selected the option to generate plots of current density and voltage distribution. This will give us a way to visualize the current flow on the board. For plotting voltage, you need to define a ground reference. Here we pick the negative terminal of the VRM as our reference. All the voltages in the plot will be referred to this node. If you're concerned about thermal effects, you also have the option to generate power loss data for ANSYS's thermal solver IcePack. SI Wave will export the ohmic power losses it computes to IcePack, which can then use that data as heat sources for the thermal problem. You could then bring that temperature data back to SI Wave and plot it, or you could even have SI Wave adjust the metal's electrical conductivity to take into account how it decreases with temperature. We won't have time to show that here, but I wanted to mention it because it is a very powerful capability. So now we'll let the simulation run. It takes just a few moments to complete the adaptive mesh refinement process. When it's done, the simulation results dialog pops up, and we can choose what quantities we'd like to plot voltage, current, power, and so forth. It also shows you how much ohmic power is being dissipated on each metal layer. The layer called VCC has the most power loss, so let's ask it to show us the voltage on that layer. You can see the adapted mesh that was used here. The triangles are much smaller in regions where the solution gradients are high. To make the voltages clearer, we'll turn off the mesh now. We can easily see the voltage drop from the voltage regulator, shown in red, to the ASIC, shown in blue. So this tells us uh, from the voltage scale that we have about 20 millivolts of voltage drop across this metal supply plane. This is more than we can tolerate for this design, so we need to reduce that voltage drop somehow. We can play with the limits on the voltage scale if we would like to emphasize particular ranges of values. Now let's turn off the voltage display and switch to a plot of current. You can see the plot uses a bunch of little arrows to indicate which direction the current is flowing at any point in the layout. As we would expect, current arrows are leaving the VRM and traveling to the left across the board to get to the ASIC. The interesting thing here is that these DC currents don't take the shortest possible path from source to sink. Instead, they take the path of the least resistance, so they spread out considerably to the sides and then reconverge at the sink points. This means that many components on the board will feel the effects of these voltage drops. Using a linear scale tends to obscure the important current paths, so let's switch to a logarithmic scale. Now we can easily distinguish between the highest current hotspots in red and the less significant currents in green and blue. There's clearly a bottleneck here at a single via that connects to a trace that leads to the VRM. We can reduce the voltage drops by adding some additional vias to this current path. To make it clear, we'll turn off the current plots now. Here is the original layout with the bottleneck we found. And here is the modified layout. What we did was to add a small metal fill near the VRM, and then we dropped nine vias down to the VCC plane. We can see now the much improved current distribution. 
the voltage drop across the plane has been considerably reduced now. And one last quick thing to show. Suppose we want to know the resistance between two points in the board. We can just drop a current source between those points and run our analysis. Then if we mouse over the device, SI wave shows the loop resistance seen by that source. To sum up, we've seen here how an accurate DC analysis in SI wave based on adaptive finite elements can help us quickly spot problem areas in our board that contribute to excessive IR drop. We can use its editing capability to easily test out changes to the layout and evaluate their effects. We can also look at the loop resistances for individual circuit elements. Thank you.